We are celebrating my birthday with my family members today and I'm so excited because I am making myself a spice cake. And yes, I am and I'm taking you along with me. So come on you guys, let's get this day started. Hey everyone, good morning, good morning. Welcome all you new folks and welcome back everybody to Loving It on Keto. We are celebrating my birthday. We're gonna go do one of those escape rooms. Yes. And then we're gonna go out to uh, the Longhorn for a steak dinner. Yes, we are, but I really want a spice cake. Uh, with cream cheese frosting for my birthday. My birthday is March 5th, today's the 2nd, so we're celebrating today, or is today the 3rd? I keep getting mixed up. No, today is the wrong calendar. <laughs> today is the 3rd. So uh, Tuesday is my birthday, but we're celebrating with family members because you know, everybody works and does all the things. As a matter of fact, some of them are still gonna be working, but I'm super excited because I want to make a spice cake today. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna share that with everybody. Now I wrote the recipe. I've not made this so it's crazy. Experiment in the kitchen with Wendy. I took the cake recipe that I made with the keto core, which was amazing. It's so soft, so moist, so delicious. And then I looked at a spice cake recipe on Pinterest or whatever and I looked to see what the spices were that they used to make it. I grabbed that information. Um, they used um, buttermilk in there so I added some more buttermilk. I did some things here and tweaked the, the um, strawberry cream cake recipe that I made with keto core, the strawberry keto core, to see how this differs. This will probably be a little denser and more heavy than the one with the core because that's the softest, lightest, moistest cake I've ever made so far to date, bar none, keto wise. And so I'm gonna to try to make this today the same way and I'll share as we go along. But I wrote a recipe. Um, I may need to tweak it before I send it out by tasting and as I go. So you guys give me five minutes to get everything um, set up and we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys in just a minute. As soon as I get everything out of my cupboards and set it up right here. So Paula, one of our viewers sent me this whisk Wiper Pro and the, the whisk I was using at the time was this one and this does not fit this shaped one at all and at the time she wanted to send me the other whisk but I said I really like this one well this one's balling up more and more and more and I'm whacking it harder and harder so I thought okay I'll give in and I said I'm probably gonna buy the other whisk well she jumped on it and sent me the whisk that goes with this so what I need to do now is figure out if I can put this on or if I'm going to need Harry to put down the camera to put this on for me. I've got the uh, instructions and it looks like it goes right over the whisk and then you line it up. It says line it up if you look at the ingredients and the, oh this also acts as a wiper. See it, it saves every last bit as a wiper, no mess. So you line it up upside down on the whisk. So you can either do it that way or you can do it this way. I'm gonna try to do it as a guard so it doesn't go up into my mechanics. Right. Let me see if I can do that. So I'm assuming it goes right on this You're way. Gonna, I think I'm gonna line it up. I'm looking at it. Okay. You want the indented part going down? Yes, I have it down. Okay, you know, so it's- I have it down. And you, you may need to be the one to push it through. I don't know, but let's see. Now you wanna line up the, the comb parts, which I have lined up. I don't know if this is gonna be fatty enough to go over it when I'm done with it. You know what I'm saying? Cause see it pushed these up? Yep. 
That's what it's supposed to do. Okay, so let me get this on and see if it stays on. Well, now you need to push it down so it's over the next portion. Or maybe we have to go up from the bottom. If Does you, it tell you to like put it over the top or go in over the bottom? Uh, it shows it lining up. Line it up from, I don't know, is that the bottom or is it is it lining it up from the bottom or yep. did it line it up so from the top? Doing, line it up from the bottom and push it up. Right, so that's where it's no, at. It's, you've got it coming down from the top, not from the bottom. Oh, I see what you're saying. And you want to make sure that the indented part is pointed in the direction you're going to be pushing it. Right. Okay. So the indented part is this part. Yeah. You want that up yeah. here? Yep. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, we'll try it the other well, way. Well, no, I'm looking at the... I mean, this is the first time, right? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, I think that's right. Okay, so you line these up, which I have lined up. And you push it on. Get all the little whiskey parts. I would point the bottom down towards the tabletop so you could push down. I am, honey, but no, it's no, my... No. Okay, I'm going to let you do it because my hands... I know. You're, you're trying to tell me and I don't understand what you're saying. So here, I'll let Harry do it and I'm going to film him. So just a minute, folks. Do you have it lined up? I thought you lined it up already. No, I said I'm going to have you do it. Oh, okay. Well. Make sure it's all lined up. See? Don't, don't take anything for granted, dear. <laughs> okay, Wendy. Yeah. There, I think they're all lined up now. Yeah. Just push it down. There you go. Okay, and then I take it off the same way. Good, yep, and then, then it should it off. push it all down. Okay, wait, wait, I don't wait. Know, that's gonna be... I might may have you yeah, do that we might part. Have, we might have to do that Just too. because of my hand. So this is called a Whisk Wiper Pro. And uh, she got it off of Amazon. So I'm very excited about it. Because of my hands, he may have to push everything down, but at least we have everything going for us. So that's exciting. So I'm gonna leave that off and do my thing. Now, we are doing three separate bowls and I am using the regular vanilla cream that just got back on Keto Chow's shelves. Yes, it did. And it's in the big bag to you guys. We have a discount down in the description below, 10% off if you want some. But if you don't have, if you don't want, if you cannot get this, vanilla cream. Use your vanilla protein powder of your choice to make yours. Now, every protein powder is different. This one is 40.9 grams or 1.4 ounces. And you're gonna have to play around with your protein powder, right? Because I don't know what powder you're using. I've never made it with your powder. I've made it with this, but I am sure you can tweak it to use your protein powder because you can't get this everywhere in the world. Well, you know, what? Absolutely. I, I, I do suggest that if you guys have used something different. Let us know. Let us know and let us know what you did amount wise. Right, and if it worked out for yeah. you, please yeah. let us know down in the comments below so I can share that with everybody. That would be great. Like, did you use Orgain? You know, what brand did you use? How much did you use of it? And how did your cake turn out? That would be awesome. Great idea, Harry. So. Here we go. I'm gonna follow my instructions. So I have got uh, my two egg yolks, which I broke, and I put the egg yolk, the whites in here in my cup, and then I added additional egg whites to it to get a full eight ounce cup of egg whites. So I've got my two here. So I'm mixing my wet ingredients that have fat in them separately from what I'm going to beat my stiff egg white peaks up to because you can't have anything with fats in it or it will not whip to stiff peaks. And the air and the fluffiness is what gives our cake that moist, raised, soft texture. And then I'm gonna do a separate one and add the powdered goods, including my keto chow that has um, some fat in it as well. So I'm gonna have three separate bowls, 
okay? And that would include the main bowl. So let me get another bowl here real quick. And let me get my keto chow. Or your protein powder of your choice. And the reason why I use keto chow so much in my baking, you guys, is because Harry, unfortunately, is allergic to tree nuts. Almonds give me inflammation big time. He does not care for the taste or texture of coconut flour. Yeah. And we will not use the wheat gluten and the oat gluten and all these huge fibrous things that people are using now and calling it keto. Plus it's all really mixed. Not only that, but Harry can get gout. And oats have... You don't want to eat any oat or oatmeal when you can potentially get gout. So there's several reasons why some of the people that are out there are using, you know, wheat fiber and all kinds of different stuff. Um, acacia fiber doesn't bother me, and that's what Keto Chow uses. So I like the... I'm not a chef. I did not take any classes or anything other than my 7th um, and 8th grade home economics, right? Other than that, I've just learned by my mom's knee, right? Me, me at my mom's side, learning how to cook. And I am more of a short order cook where I want the most bang for my buck. I want to get it wholesome, nutritious, delicious. I want to use the least amount of ingredients, even if it's a processed, prepared item. I want to be able to grab it and use it and be done with it. I don't want to chop every little thing and measure every little thing um, as much as possible. And I have a sweet tooth. And for me, sweets don't trigger me. They satiate that for me. And if I know I can make cookies, I can make um, fudge, I can make a cake and not worry about it because this is a lifestyle for Harry and I now. It really is. We lost the bulk of our weight a long time ago and we're just right there at the edge now and um, we are ketogenic lifestyle. Period. Plain and simple. I'm not going to add things that are going to bother us inflammation wise that we're sensitive to or that could cause Harry an allergic reaction. And so that's why I use Keto Chow. I love their products. I'm sorry, I do. I love their products. I love everything about them. I love the people that work there, that Chris and Miriam have uh, awesome integrity, you know, and I just love everything about them. So I know I, I didn't mean to get onto a soapbox, but I just wanted to share why, because some people get a little bit snotty about it, and I'm sorry, use the protein powder of your choice if you don't have keto chow find the one that's the cleanest ingredients that works for you and your body if you can't have dairy get the things like equip where it is uh, beef only instead of using the core product in my cake right and you can get equipped because it's I think it's uh, beef bone broth base as well use that instead you know there's there's always workarounds for things you don't have in your cupboard and I used to have a cheat sheet of all the things if you don't have this use this for instance cream of tartar if you don't have or can't get cream of tartar in the country where you live to help emulsify and make this these lift you can use a teaspoon of vinegar you can use a teaspoon of real lemon so there are workarounds to get it the same as what I'm doing so don't get upset or frustrated you just need to walk out of the box and and do some creative reasoning and add the product that works best for you okay so I just wanted to share that with everybody if you don't have real buttermilk if you don't have buttermilk powder but you have real buttermilk which I love real buttermilk I used to drink it all the time use that instead you know um, so just think outside the box a little bit and you too will make a delicious cake so let's get started also we basically eat everything she makes we don't just like some of the people where they make stuff and then they don't really eat it they put it aside they're just doing it to show you on the show but we actually are eating everything we're making here yeah like right away <laughs> right away so it's you know this is how we live this is how we work so 
I, I just wanted to say that. I do not throw food away, no, especially these no, days. Oh, no, 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 no. So, one cup of egg, raw egg whites, which I have. I'm going to do this powdered stuff. Uh, I'm going to put salt in with this one. So, go down to the directions. So, in a bowl, add the melted cooled butter, sour cream, egg yolks, vanilla extract, stevia, and whisk together until smooth and set aside. So, I need to have a bowl to melt butter in. And I'm using the egg whites and the butter um, and the sour cream. It just adds moisture to the cake and it, it was really good. And I'm hoping that it's good using the whey instead of the core, which was the beef. They're, they're two different animals. need um, the scale, Harry. Oh, it's already on grams. What is a tablespoon of butter gram weight wise? 14 grams. So I need 14 grams of butter in my bowl. That's 14 grams, and I thought it was. I'm pretty good, you know, you get pretty good at measuring out a tablespoon. At least I do. So that's going over here. Well, that's pretty much the, um, I think that's the, the foundation of measurements. What? Butter? When the, the the tablespoon. Oh yes. The basic tablespoon. Teaspoon and tablespoon. tablespoon. Yes. And pretty much once you know those, you're pretty much can kind of like guess your. If you had to, I think you could pretty much guess. Right. The ingredient, you know what? How much of an ingredient to put in? But I want it precise for this cake because right. it's new. So I want to let this cool off a minute. I'm going to move the scale over here. So I've got my butter and I'm going to put my butter actually in the refrigerator because it's very hot. And the reason why you want your butter cooled is that you don't want to cook your eggs or your other ingredients, but you want it liquid. What do you mean like so, if you were to put it into some hot butter? No, if I were to put these it? egg yolks right into that butter, it would cook them and you'd have scrambled egg yolks in the cup instead right. of eggs. So you want to cool it down. Got yes, it. you do. Got it. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. So for my powder, keto chow, baking powder, and baking powder is two teaspoons of baking powder this time. Two. One. Two teaspoons of baking powder, baking soda. We're using half a teaspoon of baking soda. And this comes from a recipe that I saw that sounded really good to me uh, in on Pinterest like their, their uh, spice cake that I saw. Only I don't have flour. So but I wanted the spice. Doing it a different way? Yes, totally. I just used it as inspiration to see. So I am using half a teaspoon of Arm & Hammer baking soda. So two teaspoons of baking powder, half teaspoon of baking soda. Now, um, add my cinnamon in the cinnamon. I want two teaspoons of cinnamon. If you're oxalate sensitive, you're not may not be able to have this cake because of the spices that are in it. Two, two tablespoons. Two tablespoons ground ginger. Let me 
shake it first to make sure I have enough. Hmm. I may not have enough. I've got ginger in another container. One. <gasps> Don't do what I just did. Oh my gosh. Well, we're gonna have a lot of ginger in that. Maybe not. The good news is, <laughs> Don't do what I did. Um, ginger, half a teaspoon of nutmeg. The good news is, is egg whites uh, nullify the flavors. So you do want to use enough that you're getting the good flavoring, right? Half a teaspoon of nutmeg, which I love. Now my ground cloves are something that I'm not specifically excited about, but I'm gonna put them in, because that's what the cake said. But I'm gonna be pretty. Pretty Johnny on the accuracy. There we go. Cloves. Half a teaspoon of cloves. So there's that. Two tablespoons of powdered buttermilk. use real buttermilk if you don't have any but buttermilk really does make it moist of buttermilk kiddo chow baking powder baking soda cinnamon ginger nutmeg cloves powdered buttermilk there we go there you have it this is our dry goods that have fat and you know <clears throat> spices and dried product can have oil in it, right? Are oily. So you have to be careful because even a minute amount of oil can cause an issue. So there's that, that's all done. Now in my eggs right here, and I can use the same measuring spoon because why? Because this has fats in it, and so does this. You want to be very careful when you're putting anything, use a brand clean, spanking, you know, straight from the dishwasher, from wherever you wash and dry your, your dishes, so that you don't contaminate your egg whites, or they will not whip to stiff peaks. So I just want to share that with you. Yeah, everybody. you want no fat, no fat at all. No fat at Keep all. Keep fat away like it's, you know, it's just bad. Like it's the devil. Yeah. Keep it away. Uh. I'm going to take this whey and dump it out because I don't want whey. Um, so, sour cream. So your wets in a separate bowl are melted cooled butter, sour cream, egg yolks, vanilla extract, and liquid stevia. So that's what I'm doing next. And it says in my main thing that sour cream is one tablespoon. So I'm going to fill my little tablespoon up. You can, you can weigh this on a scale and get the exact gram weight if you want to. But I'm doing it this way. Like I said, not a chef. I don't have fancy schmancy special tools to do stuff. And I don't think a lot of us do. So well, I want to do everything say, in it, yeah, that well. a normal kitchen would have in it, hopefully. And put that down in there. And then it says, so I've got my egg yolks cooled. I've got my vanilla extract. Vanilla extract is one teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is my homemade vanilla extract. 
I can actually reuse these bean pods and put more vodka yeah, in there. Yeah, that what Jim said. Yeah, Jim said to do. Yeah, Jim West, my buddy. Yeah. Who sent me these you as a sent, Christmas you, present yeah, to do. Yeah, you sent the whole bit, man. And yeah. It really turned out really great. One teaspoon vanilla extract. So I got that in there. And then one teaspoon. Mm, it says French vanilla. French vanilla uh, liquid stevia. Use the one that you like or that you want to use, but I like the French vanilla because we're making it a nice vanilla back taste to our spice cake. Let me put this over. So I whisked my dry ingredients already. I'm going to use the same little whisk to whisk my wet ingredients and get my butter out. The bottom should be pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm just going to whisk this first, right? This is my two egg yolks, my tablespoon of sour cream, my vanilla extract, and my liquid stevia. Yes, the liquids are all fats in this bowl. So the reason why you want the butter to be cooled is you don't want to cook your egg yolks. Again, just wanted to share that with everybody. So you wanna just take your butter that now is cool and I can just add it right to it and not worry about it having scrambled egg yolks in the mix because the bottom of my bowl is nice and flat. Everything's nice. So let me put this over in the sink a minute real quick. Here again, let's go back to the basics. I've got three separate bowls. The one where we're gonna mix the egg whites with, and I always do those ingredients last. I do all my dry ingredients, including the seasonings, right here, and I mix it up, and that has my keto chow and protein in it. It has all of my spices in it. It's got the cinnamon. It's got the nutmeg. It's got the ginger. It's got the baking powder. It's got the baking soda, okay? Now, for my egg whites for the main container. Okay, let me move this over. This is the one where we want to have everything as pristine as possible. Um, I put a little bit of salt, about a quarter, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in the bottom of my container because salt I know will, will allow me to have stiff peaks. I put a teaspoon of cream of tartar in with that because I know, again, this is what helps keep the stiff peaks in your bowl. I know I need a tablespoon of powdered gelatin. I already have a tablespoon in here so it doesn't get it. Just put that right in the bowl. And my bowl says, in a mixing bowl, add the raw egg whites, cream of tartar, salt, gelatin, egg white protein powder, and powdered sweetener, and beat on high. So, powdered sweetener I don't have. What I'm going to use, and I'll change that, because that was the instruction. So, I've got to write that real quick. So, brown sugar sweetener. Brown sugar. And I need a third of a cup of egg white protein powder. So I have a third of a cup right here. And I'm gonna put my egg whites in last because I'm gonna hand beat them before I go into uh, having it start beating on high. You don't want to uh, overfill your egg white protein powder right 
So I've got a third of a cup in here. You don't want to pound it down. You don't want to smush it down at all. And then for this recipe, because this one is the spice cake and the spice cake recipe that I looked at, um, I basically got the seasoning from it and the fact that they used brown sugar instead of confectioners. So I'm going to put in, a, and they used way more, oh God, I couldn't believe the amount of sugar. Um, but since Keto Tao is already sweetened, I already have some stevia. I'm using a cup, one cup. Yeah, they used a ton of sugar in theirs. So uh, mine's totally different than theirs in that respect too. There we go. Cup of brown sugar. That's a lot of sugar. But they had like two cups of powdered sugar. Yeah, a brown, yeah, it was crazy. So now what I'm gonna do with this is just mix this real quick. Just to get the powdered stuff all mixed in. And then I'm gonna put my uh, egg whites in here. And I'm just gonna, uh, I already have a whisk that's dirty, so I'm just gonna whisk this up a little bit just to get everything coated, right? Look for lumps or bumps or anything like that. So that looks good. Now, I'm going to beat this on high. We put this new one in and we got it, we get to see how it beats. This is a new thing. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Uh-oh. Hmm. Can't wait a minute. Because it's closed. Mm-hmm. Gotta put it in here. Yeah, find the groove. Yeah, I gotta got to get my contraption fixed. Get this plugged. I don't think it engaged because it wouldn't go up. I hope it does go up. Hope this works. Fingers crossed. There we go. There we go. I'm going to put this on. Okay, we're gonna beat this to stiff peaks and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna add our dry ingredients with the spice and the keto chow. And last but not least, all of our liquids that include the fats, the butter, the sour cream, etc. So come back when we have stiff peaks. It's working, Paula. Woo, I'm excited. Okay. So it's been 30 minutes and they are done. I did that at 20 minutes and it left the hole. That's where you want it at. Right there. Just like this? Yep, just like, just like that. That's good. I'm going to pull them. That's fine. And then we'll chalk. So it did come up a little bit, so I'm good. They are very hot right now. And we want to just let them cool off a little bit. But they did raise, which I'm excited about. Now, once I put everything in the oven, Harry checked his camera and it was flashing a red light. So we got as far as me putting the ingredients into my mixer, mm -hmm. but it did not show it mixing. It did not show me adding anything. It did not show me putting all of this cake mix or talking about anything that I talked about. So I'm gonna back up. We put the, the sugar, the cream of tartar. We, we put in raw egg whites, cream of tartar, salt, gelatin, egg white protein powder, and the brown sugar sweetener, and we beat it on high until we had stiff peaks. 
Now, I am using, I use the new uh, whisk, which is smaller and a different shape than the one I'm used to. I also used the guard, the whisk guard on it. Now, first of all, two things. I used the brown granulated sugar and I think it was too heavy for the egg whites. The egg whites whipped, but they didn't whip fluffy. If that, they whipped heavy. So then I tried to, I took it, the good news is the guard worked from keeping everything crawling up the top of it. The bad news is, is it kept me from putting in, having the mixer on and trying to get my powdered goods in and then my liquid goods in because it's so big, I had to keep stopping, adding more stuff, kind of stirring, and everything started deflating. So that was harder actually with the guard. Sorry, but it was, Paula. Now, when I took it out to get the cake into the pans, I tried to push the guard down my hands. Right now, I can't use enough pressure to get them down, and I whacked my knuckle really hard trying to do it on the, on the stone counter. Harry even tried to do it, and I think it's because it's not loose yet. It hasn't been used enough, because it was hard for him to even do. Meanwhile, my batter was deflating so I just put the whisk aside and I got everything into the oven and I started cooking it on a 325 degree preheated oven and at 20 minutes I checked it they were not done at all so I let it go for a full 30. They did rise halfway which was nice but I think two things I think the sugar maybe should be added separately and just do the egg whites with the cream of tartar, the gelatin, and the salt, and the egg, uh, the protein egg white powder, because I think I get more fluffiness doing it that way, which rises the bread, the, the the dough or the bread or whatever you're making with it, better, like the cake. Um, number two, I think that as wonderful as that whisk is, and thank you, Paula, so much for the whisk and for the the guard, the guard. I'm not going to be able to shove it on and off like somebody that doesn't have all of the pain that I have in my hands. And for some reason, this last year, I've had more and more pain. Now, I keep it under control by taking MSM. I keep it under control by using Arnica. And I just took an Aproxen because we're going to celebrate my birthday. We're going to go play at the, um, at that, um, What's the room called? Escape room. Mm -hmm. And I whacked my knuckles so hard, you guys, that it's really hurting me now. And that's not anybody's fault, it's me. It's me trying to do this. And I just got my knuckle in the way of the hard countertop. So I've got to learn how to use it and I've got to learn how to do it. But when the minute you put the powdered and the and the and the and the anything with fat in it, it starts to deflate, you gotta work fast. You got it. You got to get into the oven fast. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but we'll work on it. We'll see how that does. But meanwhile, as the cake cools, um, and I'm sorry you guys didn't get to see that part, but it smells like cinnamon. It smells like spice cake, actually. Let me get that little spatula that I use. I just want to go around the edges, and here you can come to show. I do not spray my silicone pan. If you let your silicone just rest, it will shrink away and you kind of just pull it gently. And this one will too. That's going to be a very skinny cake because it just did not um, beat the way it normally does, does it? Did it, Harry? Mm -mm. And I'm going to have a little flatness on one side because of the way I did everything. Now, um, I'm gonna frost this and I have my butter out on the counter. I have my cream cheese on the counter. Um, I'm basically gonna make my cream cheese frosting, but I'm not gonna add any, uh, I'm not gonna be adding in any strawberry flavoring or food coloring. Um, I think what I want to do is just make it plain. 
and we'll go from there. So you guys, let me get my stuff out. Let's get this cake out and onto the cooling rack so that I have room to make the cream cheese frosting next. So see you guys in the next segment and hopefully the camera, there's nothing wrong with the camera. So we'll see you guys in the next segment. Sure. Fingers mm -hmm. crossed. Yes, indeed. It's going. Well, you guys, I got my cakes out. And they, they're, they feel wonderful. They feel moist and soft and fluffy, which is really nice. But now I'm gonna make my cream cheese frosting. So let me get my mixer out. Let me get my bowl and stuff and we'll go from there. So my cakes are cooling. I'm gonna make my frosting. I have got uh, some unsalted butter that is at room temperature. gooey gooey butter whoops there we go glad I have all these napkins over here and two full fat organic uh, cream cheese I love buttercream frosting. You can also, if you don't want to add this much fat, uh, you can just make an, uh, an icing and just swirl it across the top. You don't have to, you know, have it drizzle across it. You don't have to make this, but like I said, it's my birthday and I'm making it. And that way, when Harry's birthday comes in July, he'll get a cake too that he likes because this is his favorite. And I thought, well, I'll experiment on me, right? See how it goes and that I'll have a really nice cake for Harry for his birthday. So thoughtful, so thoughtful. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. <sighs> ah, it's not worth it. It's not worth fighting, fighting for cream cheese to get an eighth of a teaspoon out of the thing. My, sorry you guys, I might, my hand's not working now at all because <laughs> I whacked it so hard. The guards, the, the hand, the gloves that I wore with the band that wraps around my wrist really helped uh, with lifting weights. I don't. I think it really did, don't you, Harry? Because well, yeah, you didn't I, complain. Afterwards. I didn't complain afterwards. Well, this is a mess. Huh. I'd say that's nice in room temperature, for sure. Perfect. Because it's really soft. soft now remember if you're if you want to use uh, there's at Whole Foods they've got the um, non-dairy uh, sour cream and cream cheeses you know uh, that you are if you do not want any lactose and then I would just use the core recipe and make yourself a spice cake with the vanilla core instead, which is the beef, and get it totally fixed so that you can have a piece of cake that's dairy-free as well. Let me put this away. Now I am going to... You want me to do it? What? Mix it? No, I'll do it, honey. But thank you for asking. That's my cake frosting thing. I don't want it just to taste like cream cheese. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to just whip it Whip your cream cheese and your butter um, and get it nice and whipped up before you add your powdered sugar. Okay, I whipped the cream cheese and butter together. Now I am going to add in two teaspoons of vanilla. Two teaspoons. 
one, two. And I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of a French vanilla liquid stevia. It's the Now brand. You need to read yours and make sure. I'm also gonna add in one teaspoon of English toffee because I like that caramely undertone taste for my frosting. Okay, let me put this over here. Let me get this beat in. Let's do that on low. It's gonna change the color of your um, frosting to a nice pretty beige color, right? Oh yeah, that's nice. Now I want to uh, add in my powdered sugar and this is erythritol uh, monk fruit blend and I want to add in two cupfuls. Now here's the deal, if you don't have the powdered confectioner sugar you can take your granulated monk fruit erythritol, put it in a high speed blender and blend it until you get powdered. So. Don't say, oh, I don't have, right, because, um, oh, this is a one cup scoop in here. So this is a one cup scoop in here. I'm going to put in one and kind of stir it in by hand and get the powder so that it's not going all over everywhere, right? Yeah, because it will. You'll have a cloud. Oh yeah, you will have a cloud. Let me let me start it on low. Just turn that off and get my second cup in. Oh, did I mess up my hair? Nah, you're good. Okay. number two use more or less to your taste it's all about taste in the frosting some people like a lot like I do some people like a little bit some people want it sweet some people don't it's all up to you I would make it for the first time and add one cup to see how you like it then go forward with another cup now, you notice how thick it is. I'm gonna put a little bit, I have all total, less than a quarter of a cup of water. I'm just gonna put some water in right now. About a tablespoon worth. I'm gonna turn this on low. Doesn't take a lot of liquid. Now I'm gonna, I see a couple of lumps in there from my sugar. I don't have time for that and I don't mind just a little lump in my frosting, but that's me. Okay, that still feels a little bit, well, I don't know. Let me taste this. That's delicious. Here, Harry, taste that. Well, that's really good. That's really delicious. I don't know if they so, got me or not, but. We're done with that. And yes, that is really good. That is really good. Would you like a beater? Yeah. You guys, come back <laughs> when I get ready to frost the cake, but this is delicious. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, indeed. Mm, 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 mm. Okay guys, I'm going to assemble my cake and I always put a little dab of frosting on the pan right here because it helps hold the cake in place. It's cake glue. It's cake glue is right. So I'm gonna put that on there. 
I'm going to put a generous amount of frosting through the middle. This smells so good, doesn't it, Harry? Yep. I'm like, my stomach all of a sudden says, uh, I'm empty. How about me? Yeah. I haven't seen a puppy all day in here. Yeah, I think she's under your desk or something. Is she? I don't know. Where's she? I can't Somewhere. even see if she's over on the couch over there or not. I want to make sure you get around the ends here. No skimping on the frosting, man. Like I said, you can use the cake pans you have at home if you have a large, uh, you know, oblong cake pan, sheet pan, use that. I just happen to like a lot of frosting with mine since it's my birthday right and oh yeah that's the only uh, since reason we're celebrating oh i want to make it a double a layer cake because i just think that frosting in the middle is perfect okay now you put your second layer on i find my little flat spot see this is the flat spot there's a flat spot here that we're going to match put just a little bit more frosting on this side just to raise it up a little bit it's like drywalling. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm hmm And then I'll just go around the sides. You guys will come back when it's all nice and frosted. Yes, indeed. Got my cake frosted. I'm just gonna sprinkle mine with a little bit of cinnamon on top. Just a little bit, just to give it some color, since there, it, it really doesn't have any color. There. And you guys, that is my spice cake with a van French vanilla cream cheese frosting, keto style, all the way keto style. Yes, indeed it is. And it looks amazing and beautiful, but you know what? What goes really good with cake, you guys? But Harry, give me a guess. What goes really good with cake? Ice cream. Yes, it does. And look what I have in our Ninja Creamy, all ready to go, you guys. So we are going to push this and we'll come back and do a taste test with my spiced cake and caramel macchiato ice cream. See you guys in the next segment. Okay, I'm going to cut the cake. Let me do it this way. I do half. Look at that, you guys. Look at this. Look at this. It look good, huh? Doesn't it look good? Ooh. Man, it smells good too, you guys. I am really excited now. Okay, I'm gonna put the cake on its side because we are getting ice cream. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's just easier to eat mm -hmm. if you have... Oh, didn't the cake get cut on the side? Did I not? Let's see how nicely that frosting just kept that cake 
Look at that. That looks wonderful. Mm -mm -mm. And now I'm going to get my Ninja Creamy Caramel Macchiato ice cream out. Yes, indeed. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Excuse me. And I'm going to take the container over here. I'm going to get a paper towel to hold it. Got my ice cream scoop. Let's see if this scoop is scoopable, you guys. Yes, it is. Yep. Do you want one or two scoops? Two. You gotta ask. I know. I should have just started, right? Yep. You guys, that is awesome. Isn't it? That is awesome, awesome, awesome. Now I did Put add awesome on it. a tablespoon of allulose to the mix because I did not have the tarragum uh, yet, which I do have now. So anyway, you guys, we're having ice cream and cake, spice cake, caramel macchiato ice cream, and it's all keto. And I'm so excited, you guys. Anyway, see you guys in just a minute. We're gonna do a taste test, yes indeed. Oh man, you guys, I am so excited. I am excited. This is amazing. This turned out beautiful. That turned out absolutely amazing. I'm gonna taste my cake alone first. Let's do a taste test. Smell cinnamon, spice, and everything nice, and vanilla. Mm. Hmm. Turn it so we can well, see. Well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna just try the cake first. Okay. You know, and then uh, with the ice cream, right? Ooh, that looks so good. We didn't smell it. Now, how come you go right to the mouth? I can smell it in my mouth. Mmm. Mm. You know, it even tastes like a like a. Uh, a spice cake? That's I mean, it because, smells like a spice that's cake? That's because it is a spice cake. It's absolutely 100% oh, yeah. a spice oh, cake. Oh, it is. Your ice cream smells. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to have some ice cream here. I want to take that's some of this. That's the caramel macchiato, which is very good with the spice cake. So, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Doesn't that work? Mm-hmm. You know, this is the first time we've had ice cream and cake together in, I don't know, about five, six, seven years. No, I think, did I make wow, it before? That's good. I, I, it may have been several years ago when I made cakes, you know, a while back. But yeah, like the hard ice cream like that. Yeah. This cake is a different consistency than the keto chow core with the beef. This is a heavier, denser cake, but it's got delicious flavor. It really, really does. The keto chow core made with the beef broth, you probably could do it with Equip too, if you can get it. I don't know any other ones that are made with beef, but I'm telling you, it made the lightest, fluffiest cake you've ever had in your life. This is really good, but it's a denser cake. It, it's, a, it's a denser cake, it's, it's, but it's good. It's really good. Mm. Now, don't you think this consistency of the cake is totally different than the one made with the core? Yes. Uh, how would you put it? Like harder? Denser. Yeah, denser. That's, thicker. That's a good word. Thicker. It's not that really soft, right. really, really soft cake, but it's very good. Oh, yeah, I think it's, it's very good. It's more like a carrot cake, actually. An old-fashioned carrot cake has a little denser, mm. um, if you make one from scratch. So I want to also taste my ice cream. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I gotta have a little bit of ice cream with my cake. Oh man, 
happy birthday. Man. Mm -mm. Yeah, happy birthday to you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wow. Now that, that is a birthday treat. Man. Coffee. Mm -hmm. So the good news is we didn't eat all the ice cream, so I'm just going to kind of get it down flat and refreeze it, like make it uh, the bottom half when we re-spin it, right? Yep. Just kind of flatten it out a little bit. Here, so you can take a look at it. And this, these give you a lot of ice cream, which I'm oh, surprised really at. Oh, they really do. I'm, I'm kind of, so, was, that's something else I was kind of amazed at, you know? Yeah. Doesn't look like you'd be getting that much, but you really do. Oh, yeah. So cool. I'm going to put that in the freezer for later. I've got my cake in the refrigerator, and the reason for that is, is I've got cream cheese frosting, and it's got butter and cream cheese, so the dairy needs to be in the refrigerator. But you guys, it was very, very good. And like I said... If you want a super air puffy light cake, use the Keto Chow Vanilla Core or the Strawberry Core. And you can get it unsweetened or you can get it sweetened with Stevia. I used the Stevia sweetened one. Or if you like it a little denser, a heavier cake, you know, um, the consistency of the old fashioned uh, carrot cakes that we made without a box that you made from scratch. That's what this cake tastes like. And you can use the recipe, either the strawberry one that I made, and you can change out the flavors, or you can use my spice cake and remove the spices or change the spices and flavorings to match what flavor you want to make. Now, one caveat. Yesterday, the reason why we didn't film is we moved all the computers, all the laptops, the printers. We put our new printer, my new um, desktop, all of those things, right? And uh, I still haven't gotten through the process of getting my stuff up and running and passwords and all of those things. I have the recipe, I did it on my laptop, which I think I can go and get and get it up. <laughs> yeah, you can get it still. Uh, on the video so that it will be up pinned to the top of the comment section. You guys, we need to redo our um, web page. Because we really don't have one, and, and so many things have changed. We need to find a webmaster that, that specializes in it and that can help us because we just don't have time for all this stuff. We just don't. We either have to take time off and sit down and do it, or we get to film, and we don't have time to do it because there's other things that need to be done in our lives besides a YouTube. So anyway, we're working through that, but I'm going to put this back in my freezer. Got some other flavors made in things. I've got a blueberry one. And you guys, someone else asked. I mixed it just like I would keto chow, but I mixed it right in the container and I used my immersion blender to blend it really well. Then I just popped it in the freezer. So that I think that one's salted caramel. That one is blueberry. Right. And two uh, caramel macchiatos we made because I knew we were going to have our cake. Right. And that way you're not, uh, if you don't plan on drinking it as a, as a shake, but you're not sure, you can take your shakes and after a couple days, if you haven't drank them, like after two or three days, just make your ice cream out of them, right? Otherwise, just make them right in that ice cream container. And so far, that's what we just did. And that's the one I, my magic number to not add any liquid to it at all is to hit it twice on light ice cream, full, and then twice respin it. And I respun it in between the two. So I did regular, I did light ice cream, respin. Light ice cream, respin, done deal. And it was nice and thick and rich enough. And now my sweetener that I used in it was a tablespoon of allulose, liquid allulose. Where's my liquid allulose? And I'll share here. It's right here. I used liquid allulose, and excuse me, I used two teaspoons full of allulose. It wasn't a whole 
tablespoon. It was a uh, teaspoon for that. It was a two teaspoon. And it's just allulose. Then today, this morning, I got the tarragum. One thing that's interesting about tarragum, it is super high in carbs. It has the same amount of carbs as it does fiber, so basically it's pure fiber. However, you only want to use like about an eighth of a teaspoon when you're making the, your Ninja Creamies per container because if you were to use a uh, hundred grams, so this is per hundred grams, uh, fat is one gram, and then carbs is 85 grams. Fiber is 85 grams and there's two grams of protein. So basically it's tarragum, so it, 100 grams is huge. So if you're just putting in about a quarter, an eighth, I'd start with an eighth and then go with a quarter. And if you're like us, I probably will always have allulose in mine because we usually put stevia in ours because I want my ice cream a little sweet. So putting a teaspoon or two of the allulose maybe has made it just soft enough to use, and I may not ever have to use the Tara gum, but I have it, just in case I want to use it. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. So wasn't that one of the names of the characters in Lord of the Rings, Tara gum? No, dear, it was not. No, it was not. Tarragon, Aragon, Aragon, Aragon. Now Aragon. you guys tell us. It was Aragon. Not tarragon. Tarragon is an herb. Aragon's a, a elfin lord. Not the, he wasn't the elf. He was the knight. Oh, Harry, you get me going. Anyway, you guys. Magical ingredients for the modern cook. Tarragon. And I got it on Amazon. Yes, I did. So I've got it. And I've got my allulose. So you guys, we're done for the day. I've got to get ready to go because I am going to go to the... Um, What's the room called again? It sure is. Well, the one we're doing is we're spies. We've got to solve the case. So I'm very, very excited about that. Anyway, you guys, we'll see everybody tomorrow. Good night, everyone.